Today we are going to cook, prepare through some of my family's favorite snacks. These double as something that could be a meal in some cases or just a snack. Let's dive into some of my from scratch favorites. The first on the list is einkorn collagen muffins. I started playing with this recipe a few months ago. We had to get out really early one morning. We saw to milk the cow. There was a lot we had to do. And so I knew I wasn't gonna have any time at all to prepare breakfast that morning, but I wanted something that would be portable yet also would have a lot of protein. And that's how I came up with adding these collagen peptides to a muffin. They obviously also work as a snack. If you wanna pack them up to take your kids to the park, they're a really good option because they're pretty filling and also nourishing, but the kids absolutely love them, of course. So for this recipe, I don't have it on my blog yet. I do plan to get it on my blog. I'm doing two cups of einkorn flour. You can sub freshly milled einkorn. Today I'm using an all purpose. You could do half and half. I've had success with that. Three quarters of a cup of sugar. I've also tried exclusively putting in date sugar and that's worked great. So if you wanna avoid any plain sugar, then date sugar is a really good option because it's derived exclusively from dates. A teaspoon of baking soda, a third a cup of collagen peptides, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a cup and a half of chocolate chips. That is the dry ingredients. For the wet ingredients, I do two large eggs, three quarter cup of plain yogurt, half a cup of oil today. All I had was avocado oil, but I've also done butter and I've done coconut oil a half a cup of milk, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I combine all of that, put it in my muffin tins, and bake at 375 for about 15 to 20 minutes. Now, it would be nice if the concoction I came up with here fit exactly in 12 muffin tins, but it's more like 15, and so I baked these, and then I just used the exact same tin so I don't have to get more than one dirty, even though it stays pretty clean whenever I use these liners, but I don't like washing multiple muffin tins. It's like washing 12 little bowls. I did three more. So I ended up with about 15 total and the kids really enjoyed that I was making this video because they had so many snacks in one day. I just kept making these snacks. So we had a snack dinner and everybody really enjoyed it. With the amount of milk that we're getting right now from our cows, these muffins and a big glass of milk really really works for a meal because there's so much protein. And then of course I had a few other things as well. I wanna point it out in case some of you may have noticed, yes, my salt cellar was broken and I'm still using it because it mostly just cracked out of the back whenever it was dropped. I actually lost in the same week two other antique bowls. Luke's like, maybe we should start doing plastic. Maybe, but uh, I think I'd rather just <laughs> keep going to antique shops and whenever I can find an inexpensive bowl, I just pick it up knowing that it might only last, well, a lot of these have lasted over a year, so I still think it's worth it, but yes, there are quite a few casualties here in this home. I know your family is going to love these double chocolate einkorn collagen muffins as much as mine does. Next, I'm gonna share with you homemade Greek yogurt parfaits. I shared this in a previous video at some point, but I don't remember exactly where to refer you, but I've discovered the secret to creating yogurt that tastes store-bought. Now, does this seem like a problem you have? Maybe, maybe not, but when you live on a homestead, if you're getting tons of milk or if somehow you have access to milk that is relatively inexpensive, I think this recipe makes sense if you are in a situation like me where you're getting a lot of milk and you need your children to, in large quantities, consume certain dairy products. My kids like yogurt. They like it especially in smoothies, but for a bowl of yogurt, the homemade yogurt has just never been quite the same as store-bought yogurt. If you've made yogurt, you know what I'm saying. Yes, you can use gelatin to thicken it. It's still not that smooth, creamy yogurt that you get from the store. So I came up with a method where I strain off most of the whey. Now that essentially is creating Greek yogurt. Actually, several hours back when all the whey wasn't out, that's Greek yogurt. I think what I have at this point would resemble a yogurt cheese because almost all of the whey is gone. I let it drain for several hours. Next, I cut the sourness and create a smooth, creamy consistency by adding back in raw milk. 
This is the key. This makes it to where it's very fermented because I've basically concentrated yogurt by making homemade yogurt, straining off the whey. I don't use cheesecloth. I use these tea towels. I found a 12 pack of them. They're like flour sack towels over on Amazon, and they are very handy for all kinds of cheese making, yogurt making pursuits here in the kitchen. Then add in something that isn't sour, but is also very healthy because it is raw. It is from our farm. And so I basically, it's a win-win scenario because I'm getting the kids to consume all of this good homemade yogurt, all the protein, and then also more milk, which we have plenty of. Also sweeten it up with maple syrup and vanilla. I'm gonna be sharing some of the process of what I'm learning, but I am starting to make it into wheels of cheese. That's my newest endeavor. And so I'm, I'm thinking we won't be super overwhelmed by milk anymore now that I'm making all of our dairy products. For a fun snack, of course, a lot of times we just throw it in a bowl, maybe throw in fruit and granola, maybe not. But for a fun little treat, I put it in this little parfait dish and layered it with frozen raspberries and granola. The kids were, of course, super pleased. I wanna take a break from sharing our family's favorite from scratch snacks to share with you today's video sponsor, Flora Store. Part of staying healthy is maintaining a healthy gut biome. We know this, this is why I share fermented foods and certain foods that will contribute to a healthy gut. It's why I like to cook from scratch and avoid certain ingredients. It can also be very beneficial to include a probiotic supplement. I can help my gut stay healthy by giving it good bacteria. Floristore is the only dual action probiotic. It flushes out bad bacteria while boosting the good bacteria designed to restore and maintain digestive balance. The bad bacteria binds to the Floristore cells and is flushed out through the digestive system process. Once Bad bacteria is flushed out, good bacteria in the gut can flourish. Over 70% of the immune system is located in the gut. Floristore's unique probiotic cells actively stimulate immunity. It is the number one pharmacist recommended probiotic brand based on a 2022 US News and World Report survey. They have this basic Floristore daily probiotic supplement, but they also have them designed specifically for kids and babies as well. Floristore is offering 20% off your order by using the code Floristore20. So you can visit floristore.com. Use the code Floristore20 to get 20% off. I will also have it linked below. Again, thank you so much to Floristore for sponsoring today's video. The next thing on the list today is sourdough cheddar crackers. This is great because you can make it with sourdough discard. If you are building a new starter and you have a lot of discard or you just want to liven up your starter, you need to discard some, a cup of starter, it can be active as well. Mine was active here, but it can also come straight out of the fridge. Three quarters of a cup of flour. You can use all purpose, einkorn, spelt, uh, regular all purpose, any of those combinations. It's such a small amount of flour that I find you can get away with almost anything. If you have rye flour, throw it in. A quarter cup of butter. In my original recipe on the blog, I say to melt the butter and then drizzle it over the top. I ended up pouring it into this recipe and then brushing the top as well. Anything will work. These are not super fussy. There's my broken salt cellar again a teaspoon of salt. And then at this point, you can get creative with them. I like to throw in an herb blend. In today's case, I'm using an Herbs Day Provence. And then I'm also adding in shredded cheddar cheese. This makes sort of a Cheez-It type of taste. At least that's what my husband told me. He said, oh, you made Cheez-Its. If you get the crackers really, really thin, which I'm gonna show you here shortly, they do get crispy. It also allows the oven to toast the cheese and give you that cheese it flavor. I cannot wait till I can try this with my own cheese. This is store-bought cheddar. It's the first dairy product I've purchased in a long time. I wanted to have it for this video and I don't have any cheese made yet. I've been experimenting. I have three wheels made, but now they have to age. None of them are cheddar. I'm starting with German butter cheese, which was recommended by my friend Kate from Venison for Dinner as well as two batches of Gouda. So that's supposed to be good beginner cheese. I don't know when I'll be ready for cheddar. I wanna master this whole process before moving on to that. Knead this almost like a dough, it's pretty thick. 
I am a parchment paper reuser, so I always have pieces of parchment that I've used for something else, especially when I'm making sourdough bread, I will use the same parchment as many times as I can get away with before it's all ripped up and unusable. I like to put this between two pieces of parchment so that I can get it extremely thin. If you don't get it extremely thin, you're gonna end up with something that resembles more of a tortilla or a flatbread. If you want it crispy, the key is thin. And the only way to do that is to press it between, or at least in my experience, two pieces of parchment paper. I push it out from the center, making sure that there aren't any thick pieces. And a lot of times it will go bigger than the parchment that I have it between, in which case I just trim off what comes out and then use the other piece of parchment paper that I pulled off of the top, fold it in half, and then press the rest of it between that. Basically, I want all of this to be as thin as possible. So if that means using more than one tray, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just trimming off the edges here so that I can make this paper thin and get a crispy cracker. I noticed that I had a little bit of butter in the bottom of the pan I melted butter in, which is typically the case. I don't like to waste stuff like that. So I am brushing it on with a little basting brush in order to make the top get a little bit crispy. You don't have to do this. They turn out either way. I bake them in a 350 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. The goal is that when you pull them out, you want them after they cool to be very crispy, crispy enough to break apart. Now you can cut these really straight if you desire. I like to make this process pretty quick and just break them apart rustic cracker style with my hands. I am placing them in this jar as if I'm going to need storage and as if my kids didn't devour these about five minutes after I made this video. The next thing on the list is homemade granola with freeze dried strawberries. I have done granola on this channel several times. It is so much more delicious if you have a freeze dryer or if you can source freeze dried strawberries, which you can from your local grocery store to add that to this granola. It really makes for a beautiful addition, a nice little switch up from the usual dried fruit. Don't usually have strawberries in your granola, and so that is quite delicious. When I make granola, my way of doing it is just adding a bunch of oil and honey to a bowl and some cinnamon. I just use whatever oil or butter or fat I have access to. Coconut oil is my preference, but today I did not have any coconut oil. So I just use avocado oil because for whatever reason, the last couple times I bought oil, I bought avocado oil. I think it's because I can make homemade mayo with all of the eggs we have in our house. And we are using more and more of that right now because it's becoming the time of year where I make bread and we have sandwiches more often. I don't know, whenever we're busy in the spring and summer, I find that I make sandwiches more often. And so Lots of mayo, which means lots of avocado oil. And then I just add in whatever cereal-y ingredients that I have on hand. So oats, chopped nuts, chia seeds, coconut. I then stir it together with the oil and honey and taste it. I want it to be sweet enough. I want it to have enough oil so that it gets crispy. So sometimes I'll add in more oil if it seems a little bit dry or a little bit more honey if it seems like it needs that. I have never messed it up. You know, it's one of those things that you don't really need a recipe for. And I find that anything in the kitchen that you don't have to get out a recipe for that you can just throw together makes it about 
three times easier to make. If you don't have to put your brain into it and you can just start tossing things together and cooking them, then it makes for an easy, effortless snack, meal, whatever it may be. You may notice that it's just my son and me home right now, which is very rare. And so we have music blasting, we're dancing and making granola. Again, I don't have to put my brain in this because I am just toasting toasting and sweetening up cereal ingredients. I'm not measuring. I do have a recipe over on the blog if you do want a specific recipe, but my favorite way to make granola is just toss together what I have with oil and sweetener and toast it up in the oven, toss in some dried fruit, freeze-dried fruit. I also randomly had this package of toasted coconut that was already toasted, and so it made a really lovely addition. Now, this can be served, of course, with the homemade yogurt parfaits. Today, I'm going to be showing it in our favorite milk. <laughs> we got plenty of it, so I need to make as many things that complement milk. That's my current grocery list. What complements dairy products? because we need to be getting a lot of calories from that considering how much we have. We are just, we're loving it. I'm having so much fun in my kitchen with all of this. Next up on the list is a yogurt ranch. This again is based on the Greek yogurt that I showed you how I make earlier. And then tossing that Greek yogurt with spices and some milk to thin it down and cut the sourness and the tang a bit. I like a little snack like this because it's very pretty, it's very presentable. Kids really love carrots, at least my kids do, because they are sweet, and especially dipped into something like a ranch. Of course, this is not store-bought ranch, and so it doesn't have all the same allure and pizzazz to children, but it is still good, and it's fun to dunk your carrots into something. I'm adding chives, onion powder, pepper, salt, a little dill, I will caution that I added too much dill in this particular time, so be careful of that. Some apple cider vinegar. That's a good addition to most dressings. I will use a little bit of vinegar in. And then, of course, milk. We have resorted to sourcing reused plastic jugs because we've been running out of jars. Now that I'm using up a ton and all of my other dairy products, we have Plenty of jars, but for a while there, it was like, what can we use? Anybody give us something? And I was labeling the milk by which cow it came from because we have one that tastes better for drinking milk and then some that's better in recipes. So this is Bessie's milk to make this homemade Greek yogurt dressing delicious with carrots or other cut up vegetables. Last one on the list today is chocolate milk. We make this every afternoon. My kids call it chocolate milk time. Usually after the baby's naps, we blend together milk, frozen bananas, cocoa powder, collagen peptides, sometimes honey, sometimes maple syrup. Sometimes we still call it chocolate milk time, but we'll do vanilla variety of this. It's always just sweetened milk basically in some form. And we try to get in this habit and all the kids come in and drink it. It's a nice little thing to have around three, four in the afternoon so that they can make it to dinner. All right, well, I hope that I gave you some inspiration for From Scratch Snacks to make in your own home. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse. Mm -hmm.